What's up guys? It is that time of year again where I have to pack up all of my video gear and fly all the way across the country to CES in Las Vegas. By the time you guys see this, I actually will probably already be there. I land on Saturday and the show doesn't start until Thursday, but I have meetings lined up basically the entire time I am here or there. So how am I going to bring you guys the footage that you guys want to see? Well, it's all laid out on this table here behind me. So let's take a look at all the video gear that I'm bringing with me. And hopefully I can fit it all into my Pelican case. BPS Customs coverage of CES 2020 in Las Vegas is made possible by Thermaltake, Fractal Design, and Corsair. Thank you to them for making our trip possible. Check out the links below and show some love to those guys or else they'll probably load up my next case review sample with a glitter bomb or something. Let's start off top left corner of this table with our two production machines. This is my 2018 blade. This is my personal machine. I brought this last year. Uh, it's been really good for video work. This is actually probably gonna be even better and will likely be what we're editing most of our videos on. This is the Electronics Mag 15. And just like last year, Electronics was nice enough to lend me a machine, only this one is even better than the one they gave me last year. It's super thin and light. Uh, it's made of a magnesium alloy and it's got um, upgraded internals versus the blade. So this is a 9750H and an RTX 2070. And it's gonna be really, really good for producing our content. Rendering out 1080p videos should be absolutely no problem. The only issue is that it comes with this huge power brick, but to be honest, it's probably gonna be in the hotel room most of the time, so it should be okay. I'll probably carry this around with me uh, as we walk around on the show floor or between meetings and, and whatnot. Moving down a little bit, let's talk about lighting. Now, lighting at CES is always kind of an issue. The first couple years I went, I didn't bring any lights at all, and that was a mistake. Uh, the lighting situation inside the vendor booths is sometimes okay, most of the time very bad. Some of them have like decent natural light, but none of them ever have any kind of production set up for you. So you really wanna bring your own lighting. Last year I brought two of these. These are the Aperture uh, ALM 9s. And they're really convenient because they're very small, very light, and uh, they come with a battery built in. So you just recharge it via USB or micro USB. This year we're upgrading our main camera rig to uh, this. This is the Viltrox L116T. And you can see that it does not have a built-in battery. You actually have to uh, install a battery there. Uh, but this is gonna provide a lot more light and it's still very light and thin. So it's an LED panel. Uh, it's, um, you can adjust the intensity of it too. So this should be really handy on our main production camera. But like I said, it does need batteries. So let's move down and talk about batteries. It's really important that you, you even if you're going to try to travel light, that you have enough battery power, enough juice to get you through an entire day because you very rarely have the opportunity to sit down and recharge. So bringing an Anker 10,000 milliamp hour USB pack. I have another one of these that I'll probably be bringing as well. And then some additional power. So this, these are for this light. Uh, this is for one of my cameras, the A6400, and this is for the other camera, the A7 III. So... Uh, I'll also probably bring some uh, AA batteries as well, but these are these charging stations are going to be set up in the hotel room, and we'll probably bring all these batteries with us no matter where we're going, just so that we don't ever run out of juice. This is something that I bring with me every year to CES, and it has proven absolutely invaluable. Uh, this is the Supersonic Magnum 2 flash drive from Patriot. 256 gigs of storage, and it's super fast. So. What I keep on here is all of the like CES intro stuff, any other footage that I might need to um, intersperse into the videos. And also it's really good for transporting a video between machines. Uh, it's just so fast that it's not even a problem and it's good to have backups of stuff. So always good to have a good flash drive. Now let's talk about audio gear. I am trying to cut down on the amount of stuff that I brought from last year. So I'm only bringing two pairs of headphones. One of them is my AirPods Pro. And these are just basically for walking around um, and maybe on the airplane, but uh, these are just really convenient. They're not gonna be used for production work. These are what I'm gonna be use, using for um, the flight and for my production work. These are the Sony uh, WH-1000XM3, I believe. Uh, and I, I love these headphones. They're really good because you can connect them to Bluetooth, so you can use them on the plane with an iPad, iPhone, whatever you want. Uh, and also, you can then wire them up to uh, a laptop for editing uh, via the 3.5 inch, a uh, 3.5 millimeter jack. So these are gonna be really convenient and they pack away in this nice case. So again, trying to cut down on space 
that uh, the things are taking up because last year I brought a bunch of pairs of headphones and I really didn't need them. So that's gonna be kind of a theme. We are trying to cut down on space. So speaking of reducing our space requirements, obviously I'm not listening to myself there because we're bringing three cameras, but we brought three cameras last year and this year the cameras are actually gonna be much smaller. So I'm gonna bring the RX100 Mark VII this is like a, this is a vlogging camera and it's going to be used for, hopefully I'm going to put together some kind of CES vlog. I say that every year and I, I never end up having time to do it. Uh, but this is like absolutely the best vlogging camera on the market. It's super small, compact. It has a microphone in now. It has a flip up screen. It has this cool tripod that you could use to start and stop the video and zoom and whatnot. Um, and this, hold on, this folds down so you, into a handle so you can hold it out like that. Uh, and vlog with it. So this is gonna be clutch in getting some vlog footage. And to be honest, the, the quality of the video is good enough where it could just be our main camera if we really needed it to be, but that is that is not the plan. Plan is to make this our main camera, which it has been for, I guess, a while now. This is the Sony a7 III. And last time, last year, I brought two of these. And this year, I am not doing that. This one obviously has the full small rig cage. It's got an extra shoe on it, shoe over here. And so this is how we're gonna mount like our lighting and our, um, our audio solution. And this camera is just an absolute monster. And I use these in our regular production workflow. But I recently picked this up. This is the Sony a6400. And look, how, look at the size difference between these two and how much space you save just by going with something like this over the a7 III. Like it's just, crazy and this it's super light um very portable video quality is still really good this is the crop sensor version of this camera basically it has really fast autofocus and it has a flip up screen as well and most of the features that the a7 III has it's just much smaller uh, so it still uses the same lenses even though it's crop sensor so you're just going to get a punch in effect uh versus versus the, the full frame but it's still going to be really useful and this is going to be our b camera but because we are going, there's two people going, I have a production assistant, Mike, uh, Mike the Manic Geek. Uh, so he's probably gonna be using this camera most of the time and we will split up occasionally and this will be a lot easier for him to walk around with and uh, not gonna get super tired carrying around this, this huge rig all the time. Now, speaking of reducing space and clutter and weight, in the past, I've brought a bunch of lenses with me and this time I've decided that I'm not gonna do that. I brought this lens with me last year. This is the 24 to 70 G Master. This thing is an absolute monster. It's humongous and it weighs like two pounds. I mean, the images you get from it are unreal, but I'm not bringing this this year. I'm also not bringing this lens. This is a Sigma 16 mil 1.4. And this is phenomenal for the crop sensor camera. This is, this is a APS-C lens, but again, not bringing this one either. I'm actually just gonna stick with two lenses. So the Tamron, this is the 28 to 75 f2.8. This is this almost, it, it's comparable to the G Master, obviously not the same sharpness and whatnot, but uh, produces very similar images, especially if we're running or rendering out a 1080p video and it's much lighter and smaller. So this is a plastic body versus the all metal body of the G Master. And uh, it should be a lot easier to carry around, not to mention, again, look at the size difference. It's just, it's crazy. Like, okay, it's I guess maybe the same height, but as far as like, it's much less girthy and obviously weighs a lot. It weighs about half the, it's about half the weight of the G Master as well. Second lens I'm bringing is the 16 to 35 F4. Uh, this is a Zeiss lens. Again, small, compact, gonna fit really well on either of our cameras and should be a good zoom range, very flexible uh, for doing what we need to do on the show floor and in the vendor suites. And again, either of these lenses can go on either of these cameras. So depending on what we need to do, this is a stabilized lens. This is a this is not a stabilized lens. So this has in-body stabilization and this doesn't. So if we're walking around, if we're doing run and gun stuff with this, I prefer to have the stabilized lens on here and then the non-stabilized lens on the 873. But we'll see what our needs are. So not bringing these lenses, just gonna bring these two. Last year I brought a million audio solutions uh, and I do that every year just to have like fail safes of fail safes and I'm just kind of sick of it. I'm only bringing two ways to record audio this year. One is this new Saramonic RX9 TX9 system. These are wireless labs. The mic packs actually both broadcast to the same receiver. So this uses a 3.5 inch jack and you can mount it to either of these cameras, plug it right in and it records to the in-camera uh, recorder. 
and both of these were broadcast to this. So I could do an interview. I could have me and the produ my production assistant, Mike, um, on, mic'd up at once, and we could both be talking. And it both is uh, recorded through the same receiver. So don't no need for multiple receivers, multiple um, uh, recording solutions. Basically, it all goes right into the camera, nice and easy. These would be our main uh, main mics for walking around on the show floor and in vendor suites and stuff like that. Also, I am going to want a secondary mic. This is the Rode Video Mic Pro. I, I, this scenario I envision using this in is on the A6400. So this will mount. I have this the shoe relocator. So if you mount the shoe, if you mount something here, it's going to block the flip up screen. But this shoe relocator actually puts it over here, and then you can mount the mic just like that. And I think that this will be great for stuff where we don't need the absolute best audio, but we still need better than like the in body microphone. So this could be like when we do our show floor videos when we're walking around an actual CES convention center. And um, this this will be nice and easier to, and easy, to, easy to use, good battery life on this, good quality. And to be honest, I could probably use this to do some voiceover work as well, like back in the hotel room or something like that. This will probably be really good for that, um, just in case. Tools wise, uh, last year I brought like a multi-tool and um, that got confiscated. So I'm not gonna do that this year. Uh, this is the iFixit kit with the T-handle screwdriver and all the bits. This should be everything that I need to assemble all this gear and do any kind of quick maintenance. Same thing with this, just a pair of pliers that I'm bringing. As far as rigging goes, not bringing any Gorilla Pods this year. I found these instead. These are called Switch Pods. These are all aluminum tripods that are super solid and sturdy. They're not going to fall over. The Gorilla Pods often will kind of lean to one side and then your camera will just go pitching off a table, which is awesome. These are super stable. They have rubber feet and then these will collapse down. If hard, it's hard to do it without it, like hitting the camera. There we go. They will collapse down into a Gorilla Pod shape. So you can use these for vlogging or if you want stability when you're filming, you could hold on to it either like this or you could turn it around like this and point it uh, that direction. And it's got a super easy mount mechanism. This is, this is how you screw it on. And then when you're ready to put the camera down and you want to film yourself, it just flips out into a tripod. Boom. These things are awesome and I'm really glad that I found them. They're also I, either the same weight or maybe even lighter than a Gorilla Pod. Very light because they're all aluminum. Last thing on the table here is the tripod and fluid head. Now this is a Manfrotto B free carbon be B free advanced carbon fiber and then this is a Benro fluid head. This is the smallest fluid head that I could find. It's still smooth uh, as far as panning and tilting. And then this is the lightest tripod that I can reasonably purchase. It's weighs like I don't know two pounds or something like that. Fully extendable. And uh, these are good for, for getting like overall like panning shots of rooms or b-roll of new products and stuff like that that I don't want to just handheld it. Um, last year we didn't use these all that much, but I think it's still really important to bring them. There will be instances where we need them. So didn't want to not bring this, even though we're cutting down on some other things, still need this stuff, I think. So that is pretty much it. That is what I am bringing with me to CES 2020. So what do you think guys? Let me know down below in the comments. Are you super excited for CES? Do you foresee any new products being announced or what exactly do you think is on the horizon that some of these companies are gonna be showing off? To be honest, personally, I am not sure. I've gotten a few press releases of stuff that we will be seeing. However, a lot of it remains a mystery and that's kind of what makes CES really cool because we're never really sure what we're gonna run into and what kind of footage we're gonna be able to get for you guys and what kind of cool products we'll be able to show off. So let me know down below in the comments what you hope to see. And um, thanks for watching, guys. Check out all the CES content coming real soon. Going to have probably two or three videos a day from here on out for the next week or two. It's a lot of content, so be ready. And thanks so much for watching, guys. Get subscribed if you're not already. And uh, see you next time.